Hello and welcome to Google Cloud Next 2022. You're in three GKE app development strategies to help teams deliver their best work. I'm Kaslyn Fields, and I'm a developer advocate here at Google Cloud, where I focus on Google Kubernetes Engine, as well as open source Kubernetes. And today, we're going to be talking about application development and Kubernetes. First, we're going to break down the problem, and then we're going to go over three patterns that I commonly see companies adopting as they adopt Kubernetes within their organizations, and how those patterns affect their application developers. So let's start by breaking down the problem. To break down the problem, we need to know what is the question we're trying to answer. As an advocate for Google Clouds and particularly GKE's users, I interact with a lot of companies adopting Kubernetes, and almost every single one of them is asking me this question. The words vary, but the point is always the same. How are the lives of my application developers going to change as we adopt Kubernetes? I call this the Kubernetes app dev experience question, and it has three basic parts. First, the organization is adopting a tool, Kubernetes. They're asking about a specific audience, people in the role of app developer. And what they want to know is how the tool, Kubernetes, is going to affect the day-to-day -day tasks of the folks in the app dev role. And always keep in mind that a business's goal is ultimately to deliver value to their own users. So the overarching frame this question fits into is some approximation of the software delivery process. The business wants to run apps that are critical to them. Sometimes that's apps they built, sometimes they're apps they got from elsewhere, but ultimately the tools, roles, and tasks involved are all trying to accomplish the goal of running those important applications. And to answer this question, we really do need to get to this level of the root of the question, and I'll show you why. So let's start by diving a little deeper into the software delivery process. This is a diagram we sometimes use at Google Cloud to talk about the tools we have available that enable each stage of the software delivery process. From writing code to getting the applications running in production to monitoring those production applications. These processes roughly align with two broad roles. Developers who write and maintain app code and operations professionals who run those applications in production and other environments. There are all kinds of specific roles within this spectrum, and where one ends and another begins varies quite a lot from one company to another. It's like a gradient. It's hard to tell where one role might end and another begin. But what does this have to do with app dev experience on Kubernetes? The traditional realm of app developers is pretty solidly on what I have as colored blue in this gradient. App developers are in charge of writing and maintaining app code. And to do so, they use tools like integrated development environments and source control tools. This is pretty standard anywhere you go. But today, we're also going to be talking about Kubernetes. And if you'll notice, Kubernetes on our chart is pretty far toward the operation side of the house. This is why the question of what does the app developer experience look like with Kubernetes is actually kind of hard to answer. Traditionally, Kubernetes has been created by and for operations professionals. So often when this question comes up, the folks who have been the deepest in the Kubernetes ecosystem, who helped create Kubernetes, have tended to respond with, well, developers shouldn't care about Kubernetes at all. But is that really true? It kind of looks that way from this chart, doesn't it? This is where DevOps comes into the picture. So what is DevOps? DevOps is the organizational and cultural movement, meaning it affects how your roles relate to the ownership of tasks that need doing, that aims to increase software delivery velocity, so that's kind of more to the dev side, improve service reliability, that's kind of site reliability engineer-like, so kind of more to the ops side, and most importantly, to build shared ownership among software stakeholders. So you might not have known it, but what you've just asked is a DevOps question. What this means is that even though Kubernetes was designed by and for operations professionals, due to the shift toward more shared ownership models, 
the answer to how is my app dev experience going to change with Kubernetes is maybe. Kubernetes might affect your app developers' day-to-day -day lives. But as with any good question in tech, the real answer is it depends. It depends on what parts of this process your app developers have ownership of. Ultimately, the tasks your app devs are expected to own will determine what tools they need to use. So for the rest of this talk, I'm going to explore the three most common patterns I see organizations adopting with regard to app development with Kubernetes. Each of these patterns introduces a bit more devops style ownership into app developers' lives. Many organizations I speak to are on a path where they move from pattern one toward pattern three over time. Most large organizations will probably have spots within their orgs that implement each one of these patterns. There's no one right answer to how your app developer experience should be as you adopt Kubernetes. It will depend on how you want to distribute tasks and ownership of the software delivery process among the roles in your organization. We're focused on application developers as the only role we're talking about today, so I'll explore the tasks and tools your organization might assign to your application developers in each one of these patterns. So let's dive into each one. To start, let's talk about what I call the traditional local development pattern. In traditional local development, app devs own tasks up to the point where code is checked in and ready to be handed off to teams that will build and run that code in the necessary environments. The delivery artifact for these developers is source code. They write code, check it into source control, and that's pretty much where their ownership ends. That code will still need to be built and deployed into, onto hardware, but those responsibilities are not owned by the average developer. This is how most organizations have traditionally scoped the application developer type role. The tools these developers typically use haven't really changed too terribly much over the last couple decades. Your app devs will need an integrated development environment or IDE. They'll need some form of source control to collaboratively work on large code bases. They'll need to learn some sort of programming language or maybe a few, and they'll need to get familiar with libraries both public and private code libraries that they'll be using to build the applications your business needs. This pattern also has a benefit in terms of environment flexibility. Since your app dev team's delivery artifact is source code, it could be run on any number of types of environments. You could run this code on VMs or on Kubernetes or on serverless or on just about anything. All of that is determined by other teams after the handoff. So, you can run the code just about wherever, depending on what the code is, without really impacting your app dev team's day-to-day -day lives. So the traditional local development pattern keeps you pretty solidly on the left side of our ownership spectrum of the software delivery process. This is the type of development role that most people are thinking about if they come back at your Kubernetes app development experience question with app devs shouldn't care about Kubernetes at all. In this pattern, with the way the world has been, that's been kind of true. Kubernetes was designed as a tool for folks who run code in various environments. It has nothing to do with the writing of pure application code. So developers in this pattern would typically complete their application code and hand it off to some other team, which might containerize it and run it on Kubernetes. Because Kubernetes does require that app code be packaged in containers but asking some other team that didn't write the code to package that code in a container can be kind of tough sometimes. <laughs> the whole idea of containers is that the application code and all those binaries and libraries that it needs are packaged up together. And who knows those dependencies better than the app dev team that wrote the thing? So that brings us to pattern two, development in containers. In the development in containers pattern, application developers take on the additional responsibility of packaging their application code along with any and all dependencies into containers. The delivery artifact of your app dev teams shifts from source code to container files or container images. You might think of a container image like a binary file of a traditional application. It's the compiled form of the package containing your app and its dependencies. That can be run as a container. The application developers and organizations that have adopted this pattern need some additional tools. 
They'll still need IDEs, source control, and a solid understanding of their required programming languages, but they'll also need containerization tooling. The tools to perform containerization at scale really started to be publicly available and to gain popularity starting in 2014. So the developer tools in this space are generally less than a decade old, though they're built on older concepts. The most common tool most folks have heard of is, of course, Docker. I like to say that Docker is a usability company. They didn't invent containers, but they did invent the usability tooling that has led to containers' current popularity. But Docker's tools are not the only options these days. The tools in bold here are things that Google Cloud could help you with. Cloud Native Build Packs is an open source project of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and it allows you to, and I quote from their website, transform your application source code into images that can run on any cloud. Google Cloud supports Cloud Native Build Packs, meaning we have provided tooling to help developers containerize their applications via Cloud Native Build Packs. Google Cloud also has a tool called Google Cloud Build, which you can use to build a container image and other things like Java archives to be stored in a registry like Google Cloud's artifact registry. So the development in containers pattern moves your app dev team's ownership a little farther toward the ops side of our diagram. And it's not that these pieces become wholly owned by your app dev teams, but you're leaning into building this DevOps style shared ownership model. Operations teams will probably still have responsibilities around configuration and ownership of these tools as well. Essentially what you're doing here is you're getting your application development teams a little bit more involved in the build process, the build steps of your software delivery process. This pattern does start to get into changes to your application developers' day-to-day -day lives when you're adopting Kubernetes, but it doesn't directly have anything to do with Kubernetes itself. Organizations that don't use Kubernetes could also see benefits from adopting this pattern of app dev. Since containers themselves provide nice benefits as a packaging and isolation mechanism for your applications, organizations that start using them could see other benefits even if they're not using Kubernetes. Though if you're running things at scale, you're probably gonna wanna use Kubernetes. But if you're sitting there going, yeah, but is that really Kubernetes app dev experience? Don't they need to know about Kubernetes itself to some degree? Then pattern three might be what you're looking for. In pattern three, we explore an even more involved approach, developing directly on Kubernetes. In this pattern, application developers own the tasks of patterns one and two, completing code check-ins and containerizing their application code, and they pick up the additional responsibility of understanding Kubernetes enough to define how their containerized applications should run on Kubernetes by writing Kubernetes declarative YAML manifests. These manifests are key to the beneficial declarative nature of Kubernetes. The YAML manifests describe the container as well as details about how that container should be run in an environment. Things like storage and networking configurations are built into the API of objects provided by Kubernetes. In pattern two, some form of more opsy team would take the containers made by the app devs and write these Kubernetes YAML files to describe how the app should be run in Kubernetes. But in this pattern, we're once again asking the folks who know the application the best to put that knowledge to use by defining exactly how that application should run on Kubernetes. The tools of these developers will grow. In addition to all the tools of patterns one and two, these devs also need things like a Kubernetes environment to test and develop in. This could be a local environment, via Minikube, which is an open source component of the Kubernetes project. Google has a number of engineers dedicated to maintaining and improving Minikube, so I've bolded it here, even though it's really part of open source Kubernetes. This could also be a GKE cluster in Google Cloud or an Anthos cluster in a variety of possible environments, including on-prem or in other clouds. Google Cloud also provides a really handy IDE plugin called Cloud Code which provides, in my honest opinion, <laughs> amazing support for working with either local or remote Kubernetes environments right from within an IDE. I use it with Visual Studio Code, but it's also available for the JetBrains IDE. Google also open sourced a project called Scaffold, which 
and I once again quote from their website, handles the workflow for building, pushing, and deploying your application, allowing you to focus on what matters most, writing code. So cloud code is designed with lots of nice scaffold integration that can allow you to write your code and run it either in a local or a remote Kubernetes cluster as smoothly as you'd normally build an application code in like a traditional development model. Also, I wanna mention that the Cloud Native Computing Foundation offers a certification for developers with this level of ownership. It's called the Certified Kubernetes Application Developer exam and the exam itself is a hands-on test that tests your knowledge of writing manifests to run applications on kubernetes so the developing directly on kubernetes pattern moves your app dev team's ownership even farther toward the upside of our diagram your application developers are taking on additional responsibilities that have traditionally been in the ops environment managed sphere of ownership again this is a shared ownership model where these pieces likely still need operations team ownership as well. The shared ownership model where devs use Kubernetes directly means your app developers will likely need to gain knowledge about how these environments work. They may not have had to worry about enterprise scale storage and networking considerations before, so they may need to learn a bit about how those things work in the frame of Kubernetes. I would caution that Kubernetes is a large, complex tool meant to provide tooling for management and abstraction of underlying infrastructure. So you may want to be careful to make sure that your devs are learning about the bits of Kubernetes that make the most sense for them to use. There's plenty of more ops-oriented stuff in there that they may not really need, but your ops teams might. <laughs> So that's the three most common patterns I see businesses today implementing with regard to their app development on Kubernetes. Which one is right for you depends on how you want to distribute tasks and ownership to the various roles in your organization. If you want to keep app devs focused on code and have them just commit their code to source control and then have someone else basically handle everything else, then that's pattern one. If you want your app devs to start containerizing their applications, to package them with their dependencies and make them easier for other teams to run on a variety of systems, that's pattern two. And if you want your developers to own everything from how that app works to its packaging, to how it's going to be run in a Kubernetes environment, then pattern three is for you. Definitely take a deeper look at the tools I mentioned here, such as build packs and cloud code to learn more. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I hope you enjoy Google Cloud Next 2022.